Welcome back on the program. Good morning, Abuja. And yes, uh, it's been interesting so far on the program, but we'll be meeting our next guest uh, right now. And uh, the discussion today is going to center around voter apathy. And our guest is a seasoned political educator. He's one who is championing and driving the cause for the proper knowledge to be the out there for the electoral electorate to be able to key into utilize and as well as maximize their um the opportunities before them in selecting their leaders uh in the studio we have kevin akoji you're welcome on the program sir thank you very much it's always a pleasure yes. kevin akoji is the burial chief for the societal development goal radio sdg radio and he is also a one-time senatorial aspirant uh, under the Alliance for New Nigerian People's Party uh, in Kogi East, Kogi State, Nigeria. And presently, he's on the board of the Nigerian Electoral College. Wow, so much before you, so much in your plate. And all of it has to do with elections. True. Amazing. So let's talk about voter apathy. Is that a likelihood that we are going to see going into this 2023 general election. Are we going to experience voter party like we've had in the past? Okay, so first, uh, you have to note that it's a psychological state of mind that is now further executed by whoever is under that situation. And theoretically, you need to know that also that for that one, it also only applies to persons that can vote. And so if you are below the voter age and you are expressing that, what we will say is, you are the future of tomorrow, so we need to improve on our educational process to ensure that by the time you become or you attain the right of suffrage, it won't happen. And so for persons that have that psychological state of mind stating that they are not interested in elections, they are rather indifferent, they don't even know which parties and the rest. So it will always come to bear in any type of election, be it in a political process, be it in a student union government, be it in a departmental election, or even in your religious places, those, those actions come to bear, but what do we do to reduce or, if possible, expunge that particular um, psychological state from the person? Because if they do not come out to vote or express their votes or express their rights, then the, the election is not basically um, a representative of the general population, as the case may be. The 2023 general elections is just is just around the corner. It's this month on the 26th, and yet one would be tempted to say we sh we should look out for um, or we are going to still experience the same numbers that we had, or even if not higher, uh, of voter apathy. That is taking into cognizance the fact that a lot of people you talk to are saying, "I'm not interested in these elections. I don't even know, like you said, the parties." that are on the ballot or who the candidates are and uh, even where it is known not more than three or four is known and so the issues are lost now as a member of the electoral as a board member of the electoral college i'm sure this is something you people are addressing with some of the events that you've had in the past and one you have coming up in the i think next week or two weeks from now yes uh, so let's examine this what is the electoral college doing particularly so the Electoral College, we, we have been in existence for a while. I don't want to put exact dates because when the ideas came up, we love to add those dates too. But we just recently graduated our 10th cohort of our training program on politics and governance and it goes through a rugged training process wherein we take you through the theory and practice of politics and then you graduate. It's, so it's, it's, it's a politics in the world as it is to make people become politically literate. We found out that persons might be doctorate degree holders, professors, but they have no idea of the political ecosystem in which they exist in, which is one of the major challenges that even brings about voter apathy. You know? So how much of information is out there? How much of these so-called learned persons even know about what is happening in their environment? And so the basic reasons for um, political apathy will have to be identified. You know, and so when we identify them, we we'll now start working against those 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 options because if we do not do that, we will not have any gains in the democracy that we are trying to build. And so, if you even look historically, 
voter apathy has been there in Nigerian politics. And if there was any time that we sought to strike a balance was in the 2015 general elections. We saw a heightened level of participation by individuals to come and vote for their candidates and then indeed standing true to the band because right now it's not just even about voting anymore now there's what we call mandate protection it's not just vote and then you go home and then you find out that only five people voted but you hear that on that that particular polling unit or that particular ward record millions of votes and we only know that we're 20 sitting there or on the queue to vote you know so those are the concerns that will be brought to bear and that's what we also bring to the fore in our training in in the electoral college so even this month we're going to be even having hosting a uh, gubernatorial debates in lagos okay. at four points and we'll be bringing the political stakeholders in this case the persons that are running for offices the candidates who have been successfully come through the parties and then talking about parties how much are the parties even educating educating the the electorate we just have individuals come register parties those parties exist they just fill out candidates and use them as cash cows to milk people or to like, use the, let's just call the word defraud individuals a political party is supposed to be one of the vehicles of political information in any political ecosystem but i tell you directly if not that uh, in 2023 now we are having interesting dynamics in the political ecosystem it would have been as good as normal and taking um uh, if we're going to look at the last election, the last general elections, and take that into cognizance, we know how information such as uh, the INEC has not come to the polling unit. It is um, 10 o'clock, we've not seen any INEC official at our polling unit. When that person is not even, he has not even got on his bed, he's still on his bed, he's tweeting <laughs> and retweeting things about mm. an election that is ongoing, which, which he is not aware of. Or which he chose deliberately to spread falsehood about and um, other kinds of stories and fake news that fly around as a result of uh, this now wouldn't you say this too should be something that should be looked into in addressing voter apathy because if people sit down and i am getting prepared to go vote and i see something like ah uh, around who say uh, dogs have taken snatched the ballot box who say my head you can't pass they have snatched ballot boxes mm. would that put that fear to stop you from going to exercise your franchise okay so the battle against fake news never stops because whether we like it or not we have the good guys and the bad guys and the only thing that makes you know who a good guy is is the existence of a bad guy and so that's where people like nigeria television authority comes to play in this particular time our major focus of news and media agencies should be showcasing the reality as it is on ground so that people can verify and so if someone is talking about um snatching of ballot boxes in Gusi, um beggar beggar roundabout has been condoned by by thugs investigative reporters reporters should be able to march out there and bring time real-time information for people to, re to review because whether we like it or not everybody takes a decision from measuring multiple actions and so if we have the nigerian television authority beaming out exactly what's happening on the streets so i, I won't really care about somebody's tweets even if he has a million retweets and uh, uh, two million likes because i know we have to seek the right information and say okay come i've checked it it's a lie you know the election management body too is hands-on in publishing video materials content materials on that day you know the situation room we have civil society organizations that are managed and man managed situation rooms also putting out information so it's everybody is a portfolio of activities if everybody is doing their work individuals know where to seek information so that they will not be misled by what is put out there because i will tell you for free persons will still go out and put large budgets to mislead the people especially in this part about talks you know we don't like problems with soft life yes you know <laughs> so if, there, if there's hold up there we just chill mm -hmm. you know if the if the ballot if the ballot box has been snatched it's only two votes there they can go you know we, so but that should not be it let's have these pockets of intelligence working around the state so that we can just pick up those places verify or you can call a phone number and say come we are hearing this is happening they tell you no a crisis response number you know either from the nigerian police also the civil defense fire, fire fire service even the media agencies so people can call him because it will shock you people think that these respondent options are not being used nigeria is one of the most interesting places that they use all of these feedback mechanisms and we'll continue to try 
our best. Uh, my guest has been Kevin Akoje, the burial chief for the societal development goals of uh, societal developmental sustainable goal. Sustainable development. Uh, sorry, sustainable development goal radio uh, in Nigeria. And uh, he's also a former senatorial aspirant under the Alliance for New Nigeria. Uh, that is, uh, well, he seeks to represent. Uh, I actually, was, people I actually was on the ballot. Yes, you were on the ballot. So I, I, was remember. A, I was a candidate. Yes, so, that's, a candidate. so let's change the language. Okay, I was a candidate. Aspirant, now to yes, a candidate. I was yes. a candidate. You're on the, you're on the ballot. I yeah. remember now. And uh, it was a good race you had then, too. And we look forward to seeing you then in the Senate, but uh, maybe sometime in the future. And uh, of course, he's on the board of the Nigerian Electoral College. That is the college that, uh, of course, you know the Nigerian Electoral College and all they do in passing out information as well as making sure that we are abreast with everything that has to do with our political situation here in Nigeria. It's been a pleasure speaking with Same you. Same here. Always a pleasure. Yes. And as we wind down to the election proper, uh, we would say we'll still get to speak with Kevin once or twice before the ele election itself. We know how busy you are. But uh, okay. if you well, can yeah. oblige us, we'll still like to speak with you. We'll go on a short break and um, while we're on that break, we get to see our money saving tips and when we return, uh, we'll take our second guest on the program. Please stay with us.